Hi everyone and welcome back to the Hobby Dude 007 channel and part 5 of our Barracuda build. Let's take a look at our progress. Alright, first of all I want to say sorry that this update is a little late. Uh, my wife and I own a business and can you believe my business has the gall to interfere with my workbench time? <laughs> uh, also, we've been on vacation, so well, that's enough about the excuses, but I want to go over a couple of things that I've learned. This is my first build video on the channel, and I have learned a few things. First of all, don't do two builds at once, even though they're big scale and smaller scale. Um, I would see the 64th scale sitting over there that I hadn't caught up with, and I'd, I'd stop the 25th, go over, and then I'm finding that I'm missing stuff on the 25th and back to the 64th, so I will not be doing that that again. Um, also, with a level of detail that I, I started to put into this thing, I'm finding it, that it is taking me a little longer to get it done. But that's okay. Uh, I will be doing them a little bit different. I'm learning from this experience for sure. Uh, so I'll be doing them a little bit differently in the future. So with that said, let's get to this Barracuda. Let's start with the engine.
Well, here's our completed engine. This is a look at the uh, Parts by Parks distributor. And along with that distributor set came the spark plug boots, which you see here. And I used the model car garage uh, wire looms and painted those black, so it's kind of hard to see them. And this is an electronics diode, and it closely represents the inline fuel filters, the clear ones from back in that era. And here it is bent into the shape from the uh, fuel filter, or excuse me, from the fuel pump up to the carburetor. Uh, overall, a really good looking engine. This is a look at the uh, all clad exhaust manifold paint that I uh, decided to go ahead and airbrush on there. A front view of the engine, you see the pulleys are painted engine color. Uh, some of the pictures I saw, that's the way they were. And here we've got some uh, weathering on the bottom of the engine. Overall, I think it really did turn out pretty well. The air breather, the air cleaner is a parts by parks aluminum item. Uh, my brother-in-law and my wife said they remembered that being either chrome or silver. So the end that they didn't remember, I just went ahead and used the parts by parts, which I think gave it a kind of aggressive look there too. Um, but overall, I'm very pleased with the engine. Hey guys, last minute update. I decided I wanted to add a um, dipstick to the engine. And to do that, uh, as you see on this 572, a lot of times you, they stand out. My truck has a yellow one and I put a yellow one on this 572. In this era, this engine uh, most likely had the engine color on the dipstick or silver. It even could be, could have been uh, semi-gloss black. And of course, my wife didn't remember any of that. Uh, but I want to show you how I usually do a dipstick. There's one of a couple ways to do it. My favorite is I have a piece of stainless steel tube. Uh, don't know if you can see that. This is um, 30 thousandths, and it's hollow. And I have some craft wire here that I've had. <laughs> you can tell by the looks of it. It's pretty old. Uh, I've had this a long time, and I usually just cut me a section of this. And uh, it fits right down in the tube so it can be functional so to speak but you don't need that not for a, a static model um but uh, i'm not wearing my optimizer hey i got it uh but as you can see it it actually functions um there's a couple ways to do this a lot of times i'll take and drill a hole right about here in the block so i can run this piece of um tube right down into the oil pan or in that general area there and as you can see well I got something on it um, leave that right about there and then the dipstick will stick out of it just like the real thing now on this particular car on the uh, 318 and the 340 the uh, dipstick was located right just to the left of the um, fuel line and came up right there at the alternator. So it came up right about here. Um, and again, I think I'm going to paint this one silver so it'll stand out a little bit more. And honestly, you're probably not going to see it anyway. Um, but uh, now to do that, because of where it's going to be located, I doubt I'll use the tube this time. I'm probably just going to make the dipstick and then I'll just have it coming right up through there so you can uh, see the top of it. And how we're going to make our dipstick is we take our tweezers and let's see here take our tweezers and all we want to do is make a loop where that finger goes when you're checking your oil and just go right over like that and there you go there's a couple different angles you can do i like them where they'll show up you see how that one is or you can straighten that little uh joint up right there just slightly uh in fact that right there looks a lot better uh we'll get that painted and and installed if you can see it we'll get that painted and installed and we'll be right back okay so our interior is totally finished now as you can see uh here's a picture of the dash after it was painted looking really really good and you saw the ignition keys laying separately well here's our interior so you can see it all the way around and we'll try to tilt it here 
hopefully the light will catch it right. Um, turned out really, really nice. Um, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Let me grab a toothpick here. But maybe you can see the keys kind of swinging down there. The keys are in the ignition. There they are. And I thought that would be, since they had them on the foot of which, uh, sprue, I just went ahead and added them, put uh, two or three keys on the key ring, uh, Plymouth key ring, and just stuck them in the ignition, which I thought was kind of cool. All right, so there's our interior. We're ready to get it into the body once we get uh, the, the bare metal foil and the top finished. And let's go over to that chassis. Okay, so we got our chassis. You see where we went ahead and painted uh, under the hood. I went ahead and picked out the radiator, the battery, added the washer bottle. I kind of put a little bit of the clear um, washer fluid, the, the all clad transparent blue in that, and that turned out really well. And you'll see where I picked out the engraved lines with a toothpick and the clips, the retainers. Uh, went ahead and painted the K member, as well as went ahead and did the same thing with the firewall. Picked out the uh, the lines with a toothpick, uh, washer motor, uh, wiper motor, all that stuff. And our rear end and leaf springs is just semi-gloss black uh, to Mia. And we're going to go ahead and start weathering the underside of the chassis now. Um, I used to dry brush a lot of this stuff, and there's still areas that I still dry brush. But I really like these uh, Tamiya Weathering Master. Uh, for chassis and rusty or dirty areas, I like to use set B and C, which is uh, snow, soot, rust, orange rust, gunmetal, and um, silver. And I'm going to start off, and these things come with some great little... Uh, great little brushes and or excuse me the little pads and brushes the applicators but you can buy a set of these on online or at walmart or something a big pack of them so you've got extras there too um you can see right here i've already started just lightly on this side and just very lightly to just give it a little bit of used look and we're going to start with using the uh, soot here and get a little bit on the applicator here 
and only a little bit. It's kind of like, you know, you can always add more paint when you're dry brushing. So, and I like to go with the, the direction of where the car would be going too. So as you can see, we're just adding a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit at a time. Our weathering is done and now we need to work on an exhaust system. This kit was a Pro Street so it did not come with an exhaust system at all. So how we're going to do that is we're going to make one using solder. Uh, if you've never done this, first of all, let me go through a few of the first steps here. I always uh, use just a rosin core solder and this is 62 thousandths which is a would be about one and three quarter inch which most exhaust systems are two inch but eh, that's going to be close enough now for me and this is the way i do it and by all means if someone has a better way of doing it i am all ears but i enjoy this kind of stuff too i always make mine seven inches that way um i can uh I got a little room there for little errors and stuff like that. And the great thing with this stuff is it's so soft that uh, you can cut it very, very easily. And you need to get it nice and straight. And the way I do that is I've got an old uh, football cutting board that's kind of broken. And so it, it, I, I don't throw anything away. Everything's a good tool in its own way. I always put a piece of paper down. I'm going to show you why here in just a second. And we need this to be nice and straight. So we're going to put that down on it. And we're going to put our thing. And we're just going to roll this. And as you can see, all these lines, that's all on your cutting mat. And I like a clean cutting mat. I'm a freak about that stuff. But anyway, um, as you can see, nice and straight. Nice and straight. Um... Now, what we want to do is we want to go over here to get this out of the way. And I took, let's get our stuff back over here, the um, duster kit that I got the um, engine out of and cut the mufflers off. And I've got my little uh, marks cut in there that you can see from where they'll go in. And as you can see in these pictures, the exhaust system how it should run and in the original barracuda despite it's all molded in you can see that that matches up to what it should be so while it's all molded into one piece uh at least it's accurate so what we're going to want to do is 
I've already done this ahead of time, but you see the little notches in the, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but the little notches there, and these will squeeze right in there. So they fit nicely right in to the exhaust manifolds. Um, so what we want to do is, and I'd already measured and marked it, but I'm going to do it again so you can see. I've got the engine in where it's going to be, and I know that my exhaust is going to need to be about that far to reach and the same on both sides and that's right about where I've got my finger there and so I know that I am going to mark that with my sharpie there we go and it is ready to go so Sit back and enjoy, and we're going to make one more, one cut in this thing, and you'll see that as we get down to it, and we're going to, by the way, these uh, mufflers are going to be, need to be glued in at this angle, and these are going to be two pieces, as you'll see as we go along. I'll, um, I'll make the, the shape that matches what we were looking at, and, um, We'll run that, and then we'll cut that, and then we'll make the pieces that go out to the exhaust pipe. And by the way, if you'll notice, right beside the frame rails, and here is our uh, rear uh, gravel pan. And oh, I've got to clear coat that. I forgot that. And you'll notice that it comes when it's locked in. It's perfect, right? If we run them right against that frame rail, it's going to run right to the exhaust ports. So that worked out really well too. So hey, we're doing good so far. So let's get going. Okay, all we need now is a ra uh, radiator hose and maybe a couple of heater hoses, and we'll be looking pretty good. Um, go ahead, and I did a little mock-up there on a couple of parts. And um, let's take a look underneath. And you'll see I went ahead and weathered up a little bit the exhaust uh, system itself, too. And we're looking pretty good there. Uh, i got to do something about those rolling wheels. Of course, it looks like it'd take off too. Went ahead and weathered up the rear end a little bit more once we got that and the leaf springs in there. And um, I think it, it turned out pretty well, uh, for my taste anyway. Uh, okay, guys, um, next time we're going to go ahead and wrap it up, I hope. Um, I'm going to focus, uh, I think, the rest of the day on the 64th. I want to go ahead and knock it out of the way totally so we're done with it all together. 
And thanks for watching so much. Hit that like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.